there is a quiet epidemic in science causing an unbridgeable rift between the truly inquisitive and the unknowingly indoctrinated a branch of pseudoscience has been pedestalized and promoted to an untouchable position causing all skepticism and critical thought surrounding the subject to be swiftly silenced without consideration the crux of the issue is a matter of philosophy of science and what it means for a proposition to qualify as actually being scientific this question was the main point of contention expressed by the late nineteenth century group of activists known as zetetics who caused quite a stir in the scientific community of the time their philosophy of zeteticism distinguished itself from mainstream science with its emphasis on observation and experiments rather than on hypotheses and theories the usual scientific method involves inventing an initial hypothesis that is then tested and proved or disproved based on the results of an experiment the zetetic method on the other hand proceeds direct from inquiry without first speculating and theorizing potential answers a scientist starts by determining a hypothesis then devises tests to prove or disprove it a zetetic asks a question then immediately proceeds to performing experiments and making observations to answer that question rather than first forming a hypothesis as instructed by the scientific method for example if we were to question cosmology like the shape and position of the earth a scientist would first make a hypothesis suggesting the world to be round or flat geocentric or heliocentric and then proceed to test their theory the zetetic however skips this step of hypothesizing and focuses fully on making observations and devising experiments that will determine the answer removing this step from the scientific method effectively erases any biases or preconceived notions caused by the formation of a hypothesis leaving the conclusion based entirely on what is actually observed unfortunately as richard Feynman once noted the philosophy of science is about as useful to scientists as ornithology is to birds. Thus, the Zetetics were scoffed and their findings shunned by the scientific community at large. Their main body in England, called the Universal Zetetic Society, was established by Dr. Samuel Robotham and Lady Elizabeth Blunt in 1893 and would later be renamed after its most infamous contention, the International Flat Earth Research Society. Today, the International Flat Earth Research Society still exists, and since 2014 has been administrated by myself, Eric Dubé. The subject is still scoffed at and shunned by most, but thanks to the Internet and a diligent group of modern activists, tens of millions of people around the world now reject the heliocentric globe model and identify as flat earthers. So why have Zetetics come to a completely different conclusion from scientists about the shape and position of Earth? Let's undergo a Zetetic examination of the question to find out. If we want to discover for ourselves the position of Earth with relation to everything else in the cosmos, we start with simple observations of the sun, moon, and stars. Our experience of the Earth in relation to these celestial bodies is clear. The earth feels and appears to be a motionless central foundation over and around which the sun, moon, and stars revolve. Everyone who has ever lived has experienced this common-sense, geocentric perspective and felt themselves to be living on the stationary and immovable foundation known as earth. Time-lapse photography of star trails shows how all the stars revolve perfect circles around Polaris, the central and only motionless star in the heavens, situated directly over the North Pole center of Earth. Sundials, moon dials, annual time lapses of solar analemmas, and monthly time lapses of lunar analemmas all show how the sun and moon travel from tropic to tropic over a stationary Earth. Again, it is common sense and the experience of everyone who has ever lived that the Earth is the motionless foundation over and around which the sun, moon, and stars revolve. Unsatisfied with common sense and everyday experience, heliocentric scientists theorized a sun-centered solar system with a rotating and revolving Earth instead. 
favoring explanations over experience, scientists like Einstein claim that, contrary to our experience, the Earth is indeed moving, but since the motion is uniform, we just don't notice it. Furthermore, since everything else in the cosmos is moving, relativity theory claims we cannot distinguish Earth's apparent motionlessness from its alleged counter-motion. As Einstein's contemporary, cosmologist Fred Hoyle stated, we know that the difference between a heliocentric theory and a geocentric theory is one of relative motion only, and that such a difference has no physical significance. Thus, in one philosophical swoop, the observably motionless foundation under our feet became a moving surface, rotating around its own central axis and revolving around a central sun. Einstein never performed any experiment to prove Earth's alleged motion, and instead he simply asserted it, philosophically, as an explanation. Cosmologist George Ellis explains, People need to be aware that there is a range of models that could explain the observations. For instance, I can construct you a spherically symmetrical universe with Earth at its center, and you cannot disprove it based on observations. You can only exclude it on philosophical grounds. In my view, there is absolutely nothing wrong in that. What I want to bring into the open is the fact that we are using philosophical criteria in choosing our models. A lot of cosmology tries to hide that. Proponents of the heliocentric model have absolutely tried to hide this fact especially since their adoption of the Big Bang Theory, which once again philosophically changed the position of Earth in the cosmos. With the advent of so-called cosmic inflation, rather than the Sun being the center of the universe, now our entire solar system became just one of many, spiraling on the outer edge of the Milky Way galaxy, and still rapidly expanding outwards from a Big Bang billions of years ago. This turned the original heliocentric theory into the current acentric theory, where neither the Earth nor the Sun are central. Thus, relativity theory philosophically removed Earth from its observable, still solid foundation. The heliocentric theory spun the Earth in circles, rotating around its axis and revolving around the Sun. And then the Big Bang theory sent the entire solar system on a ride through an ever-expanding universe. This is the slippery slope of science. When hypotheses and theories are given more credence than observations and experiments, soon such unfounded explanations become believed over actual experience and experiments. Our actual experience is that of a geocentric Earth, and as shown in my book The Flat Earth Conspiracy, experiments like the Mickelson-Morley, Mickelson-Gale, Sagnac, and Aries failure have all confirmed this common-sense perspective. To philosophically sweep away these experiments and our everyday experience in favor of such untestable and unobservable theories is unacceptable to a true zetetic. So what about the shape of the Earth? What is our experience? The majority of Earth is covered in level water, the surface of which remains flat when still and undisturbed. The natural physics of water is to find and remain level, being physically unable to stack upon itself and show convexity or any shape upon its surface. Water always lies flat when still and contained. The horizon is always perfectly horizontal and rises to the eye level of the observer, remaining flat 360 degrees around regardless of altitude. When traveling long distances at incredible speeds, Jet pilots reach their desired altitude over the Earth, level out, then remain at exactly the same altitude until they climb or descend. Likewise, the mechanical gyroscope operating their artificial horizon remains perfectly level until the plane climbs or descends, often over thousands of miles. Using zoom cameras while flying in high-altitude planes, the flat horizon can still be seen extending as far as eyes can see and cameras can zoom. Our experience is undeniably that of a level, flat Earth. If your hypothesis was a curving, globular Earth, however, zetetic experience can always take a back seat 
to preferred scientific explanations. For example, Globe Earth apologists will change the very definition of level to suit their needs on a globe, claiming that level actually means curved. They will explain that the horizon does eventually curve, but only at an altitude so high that you can't reach it. They will explain that their theory of gravity somehow allows planes to remain at altitude over a globe without constant height adjustments. And they will explain that the Earth has curvature, but that it is always just beyond the hundreds and hundreds of miles of flat horizon we see. For some, these statements may seem to suffice, but as unevidenced theories continue to build upon unproven explanations, cracks start to show in these supposed scientific concepts, and a thorough zetetic re-examination is necessary to bring us back to first principles.